Hi hey folks, it's T-Tuesday Update. I am Dave Ackley. I'm a retired computer science professor, and uh, I was learning from reading Mr. Beast's uh, production guidelines that the whole point is to make the click, the title, the title card, uh, be justified, and you need to justify the title card in the first minute uh, uh, before people all click away, and of course, you know, we get very tiny audiences here, but that's fine, because this is esoteric stuff, but I figured the only thing that I could really do that I could really say is that uh, I you know this is not uh, spending money this is not goofy this is research uh, and I uh, kind of act like a professor I still do so I'm gonna try leaning into that and see if the clickbaitiness of a professor giving a class giving a live class uh, is perhaps more compelling so so here here's our title card for today Or something like that. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Uh, um, the T2 Tile project is about building this new kind of computer. Uh, everything is distributed. It's like a cellular automata on acid, as was described for some other folks' stuff, but similar to this sort of thing. And what we've been doing for the last several months, many months now, is connecting this cellular automata, this big distributed spatial computer, to a simulated robot called BV. And so uh, we've got a little bit uh, of a BV adventure to watch, and then we'll keep talking. One day, B.V. and Seneca, the summer intern, were just knocking around having fun. They were working on a bouncing problem, where after backing away from Red, sometimes B.V. just barged right back into it, and then had to back away again. Seneca said, what if you had like a timer, so you could stay and avoid Red a little longer before going blue? Oh, okay, said B.V., I like having stuff. What's a timer? Seneca had to think about that for a minute. Well, you react to things, right? Dread the red, follow the yellow. Right, said B.V. I see I do. Well, a timer is a way to do something even after the thing you saw is gone, said Seneca. Uh, that sounds uh, crazy, said B.V. Should I be uh, reacting to something that isn't here right now? B.V. looked suspicious. If you had a timer and it just went off, yes, exactly, said Seneca. I don't know, said B.V. I mean, if I could just keep an eye on the darn red, everything would be great. Hey, said Seneca, that's a really good idea. Thanks, said B.V. Uh, what is? But Seneca was off modding B.V.'s brain and muttering about feedback. And before you know it, B.V. had a new brain and was approaching red again. Whoa, this is great, said B.V. What did you do? Seneca said, I wired your red sensor to your eye stalk position so that as you back away, you'll keep an eye on the red, just like you suggested. Wow, said B.V. Cool. That was a good day. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun, uh, uh, actually. Uh, so the basic idea is... Uh, the uh, BV's eye stalks are controllable, and so you take the amount of red that you're seeing on one eye or the other eye, and you connect it to the uh, eye position swing, so that when it sees red, it, it pivots the eye further out to look more sideways, and when it doesn't see red, it uh, pivots back towards a more, it's sort of like a predator versus a prey eye positioning. And red is the predator for BV. So uh, it has this nice effect, which you saw uh, in the episode, that once, uh, once BV gets caught by the red, its eye keeps looking. Even as BV is turning away, the eye is still looking back until finally it snaps and then goes forward and it gets it very nice. And, you know, this whole idea of, you know, there's this continuous process of thinking, I have to use sequential computing, like Seneca was thinking, uh, let's use a timer, let's use an internal timer so that when the blue runs out, you keep looking red anyway. And it could do that. And in what we're going to see later, there's a bunch of timers. But this particular case, uh, BV spinning further away, you know, driving that point in, 
uh, by continuing to try to keep an eye on the red. So natural. So and it, and it came basically for free. All the signals were there. You just had to route them in a few new places with a minus sign and whatever. You saw magic numbers that uh, got tried out. So that was a lot of fun. And okay, so overall for today, the goals were to, we've got uh, Lou Wilson, Toad Pond, and I uh, have a, a talk that to go with this paper. The paper got accepted. We got to do the talk. Uh, we were supposed to have done some talk development. Lou has been a little busy. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, do we need a little bit more light here? Uh, maybe. Uh, um, so that needs uh, that's coming uh, in a bit of a rush now because the talk is going to have happened before uh, the next uh, T Tuesday update, before classes in session again. Mm, um, and BV localizes itself. Well, that's what we're going to see. Made some progress towards it. Made definite progress for it by using this idea of when do you really need sequential computing? And what does that mean in the context of spatially distributed cellular automata, these crazy uh, ways of doing it? And, and bigger fun, you know, had a lot, had a lot of fun this month. It was, it was good. Uh, uh, all right. So. Uh, development uh, first, um, the BV, uh, you know, the, the uh, so I already talked about the development, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that, uh, you know, there's been all kinds of little hacks going on, little improvements. Uh, uh, BV, for example, BV, when BV is pursuing a, a yellow ball, it tended uh, to go very, very slowly. It was like Elmer Fudd saying, I'm kidding, I'm eating rabbit. Uh, uh, and it would take forever. And that's just a consequence of the Breitenberg vehicle concept, that you take a signal level and essentially you connect it directly to a motor level in the simple view. And so that means it's linear. So if, if there's a tremendous amount of signal, you go really fast. And if there's very little signal, you go really slow. And that may not actually be what you want. So now, for example, BV has a, a more complex transfer function for how much yellow it sees to how much uh, motor values it should go. It makes it go a little bit faster and so on. There's tons of that stuff that happens every month that I haven't talked about. <laughs> I wish I could share it all with you uh, because, you know, it all sort of seems cosmically interesting to me as I try to understand what bottom-up engineering really feels like, how it's so, so different than deterministic execution, top-down, traditional programming, traditional computational models, this making these examples of working bottom up and trying to build BV and trying to figure out how to do things in a way that, you know, maybe fits into the natural structure of the architecture that we're building is the purpose of doing it. It's the purpose of uh, the uh, sixth day of, of robust is learn by implementing. And that's what we're doing. We're learning by implementing this stuff, trying to cheat as little as possible. So it's not about making it the coolest looking thing as possible. It's not about making it run really fast, although it sure could use a speed up. This stuff all runs so slowly that we're seeing it in time lapse. So be it. Uh, uh, so, essential sequential computing. Uh, um, so the basic idea, I'm going to try to take maybe uh, four minutes here, something like that, until like 12 minutes after, something like that. We'll see how it goes. Uh, um, with with uh, cellular automata, your, your, your computation is distributed in space, uh, um, and so it's very natural as far as doing parallel computation, where all these different locations in space are doing their little things at essentially the same time, or literally the same time, depending on the model. And so, you know, unlike the CPU and RAM, the CPU and RAM model that it all it can be is sequential. It does one tiny little thing each time, but it does it so freaking fast. Uh, uh, so the idea is with a distributed parallel computer like a cellular automata, uh, uh, you could read in potential all of those locations uh, uh, at any given moment. You could sense or compute or detect something, whatever it is you want to do, spread out. Uh, um, and you could compute some transfer function that's a function of how much you can see. So if you could see like, you know, three different variables, then you could have like a third order function that you were computing at this one little spot. 
Uh, but if you wanted to have a much higher order function, if you wanted to take into consideration thousands of variables, then uh, you, you can't do that in little things because in a cellular automata, each little processor cell unit can only see a tiny little bit. So you have to merge stuff together. You have to say, okay, I'm looking for this thing. I didn't see it. Did you see it? No. Did he see it? No. And so on. So gradually you build up a higher order computation out of these low order pieces. And sequential computing is great for that because it keeps doing this new operations with potentially new inputs that came from here, came from there in the same place. So you, at first you just get a little local information, but you've got farther out information on its way to you, on its way to the sequential processor. And when it gets there, you now, in effect, well, I, I did some steps on this stuff, and then I did steps on this and this and this and this and this. And so, in effect, I've computed a function that's the sum of all those different dimensions of the various things that I pulled together and computed with. So, sequence does multiple things in the same place. Now, a lot of times I say that's bad because... Uh, that means we have to erase our previous results. Where, when we do a new, the next step in the same place, the CPU, or just one of these little processing units, whatever, uh, uh, then we erase what used to be there unless we took the deliberate action to store it someplace. Whereas uh, a distributed cellular automata in space, all of the stuff that's doing transformations is still there. So if something goes wrong, it's much easier to uh, recover it. And so sequential computing is fragile because it keeps throwing away its results and reusing the hardware. But in exchange, it's very powerful because it can pull all these things from different directions and reuse the same hardware over and over. Now, how does it relate to the sequence in the self-image? I, I'm just going to say it's the pretty obvious thing for the moment here. We're going to have to take, don't have enough time to talk about the self-image uh, in detail today, uh, uh, but uh, it's the, the self-image has four processes, input, output, sequence, and judge. And sequence is the idea of, of going, taking steps, step after step after step, entirely inside your head. Uh, uh, so that nobody from the outside, you know, without using, you know, special detectors or MRI or squids or something could tell what's going on inside your head. It's internal sequencing versus, uh, uh, you know, doing a bucket brigade or writing notes on pieces of paper and then reading them back what you have. How is BV using sequence? Okay, that's the main point. Let's take a look at this second clip. And actually, that's going to use up most of our time. And we're going to end up, sorry, have to uh, do it next time. Then one day, BV dropped onto the grid and quickly realized there was something going on. For one thing, lots of bigwigs were in the lab, including both the lead dev and the architect. And on top of that, there were no balls, yellow or blue, on the grid, and there was this green thing that wasn't there before. BV called out to the lead dev, Hey, I thought the idea was the laws of physics never changed. What's with this new green thing? No, that thing was always there, said the lead dev. Nuh-uh, said BV. I never saw it before. Yaha, said the dev. Before now, you just had no green sensors. Whoa, said BV. Really? What is it? It's the green sun, said Seneca, the summer intern, glaring at the lead dev who was standing with a smirk. It turned out the story was the director wanted to know why BV self-localization hadn't made more progress and yelled at the project manager who yelled at the devs who pointed out there was no uh, way to orient on the grid. Everything BV experienced was essentially equivalent in the four compass directions. Oopsie, And the project BV. manager wanted to know why nobody had noticed that to begin with. And the architect said, oh, we did. And we had a magnetic field and polarized light and terrain. But if you'll recall, the director shot all that down and picked the featureless damn checkerboard in the name of elegance and scientific rigor. Um, little help, said BV. So the great challenge to use the green sun so BV could orient began. So the great challenge of using the green sun to help BV orient began. And it took a long time. There were a lot of problems. But eventually, 
started to work. So that spinning around in place is a key sequential step where uh, BV tries to mark the direction that east is, makes complete circles and counts how many events using sequences it takes to uh, make a complete circle to bring and recenter uh, on east. Uh, uh, so yeah, this is this is BV's new grip, the Orient grip which I, I love that I read someplace that uh, Orient used to mean face to the east and then it split into meaning the east and meaning face in any direction. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's what BB's doing here. Uh, he's using the new uh, green sun, oh, not the new green sun, the, uh, the always been there green sun that BB just never saw before uh, um, and uh, using it to navigate around the, the uh, grid. So step by step uh, um, whoops yeah there was a little glitch in the matrix there okay so that's it all right uh, uh, we're at 1216 so I am gonna need to uh, move on so we got two <laughs> uh, two new uh, Living Computation Foundation nerds uh, this month. Thank you very much. Uh, Ian, I haven't met, I don't think. Uh, Richard is actually my oldest friend, so thank you. Uh, um, and uh, I absolutely over time, so I'm going to let this go. Next time will be November 5th. Class will resume. Class will be in session again November 5th. In the meantime, come visit us on the Discord and so forth. The goal is uh, BB actually localize itself try to figure out some representation of where it is on the grid and have lots of fun. And we shall see. Thank you so much for stopping in whenever you came to see it. Hopefully there is some little bit of value in addition to all the everything else. I hope to see you next time.